In this example, we will be looking at this table of data, dealing with the Math Concepts Chapter 1 and 2.1 quiz scores. Now this particular quiz has a total of 10 questions. So the scores, and, and each student gets one point for each question that they answer correctly. So the scores range from a total of zero, that would be not getting any questions right, to 10, which would be 100% getting all 10 questions right. Now here are all of the student IDs numbers, and here's their corresponding score. Uh, so this student got a score of five, this student got a score of eight. So when we're looking at this table, the first thing that we need to figure out in the data set is um, this data cons set consists of n number of data points. So we need to figure out how many data points there are. And you just count up the scores. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So it consists of 15 data points. Again, each data point is a score between 0 and 10. If we want to analyze how the entire class did, we will want to summarize this data a little differently. The first step to summarizing the information is to organize the scores in a frequency table. In this table, the number below each score gives the frequency of that score, that is, the number of students getting that particular score. So in a frequency table, you have a title, so Math Concepts Chapter 1 and 2.1 Quiz Scores. All of the, sco the scores are listed in this row, and below are the, the corresponding frequencies. So um, you only list scores in which uh, the students obtained. So here there's a score of a 1, so I'm going to list that. And there's only one person so the frequency that scored that, so the frequency of that score is 1. Now nobody scored a 2, so we, would, we do not put that in our frequency table. No one scored a 3, so that's not listed in our frequency table, or a 4. But there is someone who scored a 5, and there's just one person obtaining that score. The next is a score of 6, and there is one person who obtained that score. There is a score of 7, and there's two people that obtained that score. So the score of a 7 has a frequency of 2. There are a, there's a score of 8, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4 people who obtained that. Uh, also a 9, and there's 1, 2, 3, 4 as well, and lastly, 10 and there's two people that obtained uh, that uh, the score of 10 has a frequency of 2. Now if you're only given a, a frequency table and you need to figure out how many data points there are in this frequency table, then what you would do is n equals just all of the uh, combined frequencies. So if you go 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 4 plus 2 you will arrive at 15 and n equals 15. So if the n isn't given, that is how you uh, figure out what n is. Now, once you have a frequency uh, table made, there's a variety of things you can do. Here is the um, frequency table we just found all typed up. and you can make a line graph. So here is a line graph of the Math Concepts Chapter 1 and 2.1 quiz score. So you need to have a title. And then here uh, the score is 1 and there's one, there's the, the scores listed here, frequencies are listed here. There's Pearson got a frequency, uh, there's a score of 1, they have a frequency of 1. But here if you see um, a score of 2 and there's a frequency of 0. So here in this table all of the people who uh, all of the scores that were not scored, or there's no frequency of them, they are actually represented in the line graphs. And then here is a score of a 5, there's a frequency of 1, 6 has a 1, 7 has a frequency of 2, 8 has a frequency of 4, 9 frequency of 4, 10 frequency of 2. They all correspond with the frequency table. From a line graph, you can just easily make a bar graph, which is basically just the same information, but instead of points and lines connecting, there are just column, um, columns here. And so here you can see that 2, 3, and 4 are listed in a bar graph, and they all have a frequency of 0, which means they're not shown. And then here are the corresponding score has a frequency, 5 has a frequency of 1, 6 has a frequency of 1, 7 a frequency of 2, and, and so on. And so it's important to label the axes. This is the score. This is the frequency. There's the title. Now the nice thing about a bar graph is that they're easy to read. 
It's a nice way to present a good picture of the data, data and it's easy to detect outliers. Now, what outliers are, those are extreme data points to, that do not fit the overall pattern of the data. And if we look at this example right here, this bar graph, we can see that most of the, the scores are clustered in this area. And then there's a bunch of space where no scores were obtained. And then there's one person that scored a one. Now this is an outlier. Also, if outliers can be on the other end. So let's say, you know, there was some column out here and it was, it was far away from the regular uh, overall pattern of the data. This would be an outlier as well. So those are called extreme data points, uh, which are also known as outliers. So yes, in this bar graph, do we have any outliers in our bar graph? Yes, we have the score of one. Score of one, that would be an outlier. Okay, so um, if scoring, let's look at this question. If scoring a seven or above is passing, what percentage of the students passed? So what we're going to do is just add up the frequencies of 7, 8, 9, and 10, okay? Um, it's also really nice just to look at it on the frequency table because then it just tells you right there and you don't have to kind of read it off the bar graph. So uh, 7 has a frequency of 2, 8 has a frequency of 4, uh, 9 has a frequency of 4, and um, 10 has a frequency of 2. So if scoring a 7 or above is passing, what percentage of the students pass? So these are all of the frequencies of, of people that scored 7 or above. Now what we do is we take that number and we um, divide it by n. And remember n equals 15. There's 15 in this example. So when we add up all those numbers, it's 12 over 15. And when you go 12 divided by 15, you get 0 0.8 and we need, it's asking for a percentage, so we need to take this decimal and convert it to a percentage. So you take the decimal and you move it over twice, add a zero, and that means it, uh, 0.8 is the same thing as 80%. So um, if scoring a seven or above is passing, what percentage of the students passed? 80% of the students passed.